Hello, everyone. Um, if you could just leave a few seats on the end as a few more people come in, move in a couple of seats. Thank you. Um, it's the last talk before lunch, and I know everybody's getting a little bit restless, but I'm very excited to hear from Donna Zhu this morning. Um, Donna Zhu, sorry. Um, uh, Donna is a software engineer and loves public speaking. Donna has been performing stand-up, improv, and sketch comedy for more than a decade. She believes every developer can be a confident public speaker. Thank you, Donna. Every developer can be a great public speaker. And in this talk, I'm going to show you how. So, I want to get to see some hands. Who here is a little bit afraid of public speaking? Great. <laughs> and who in this room, put your hands up if you want to be a better public speaker. Excellent. Every hand went up. You're in the right talk. <laughs> in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how to be a better public speaker. Public speaking is not something that people are born with. It is a learnable skill. And I'm going to show you how public speaking is like a software engineering problem. And I'm going to show you the design patterns and the algorithms that you can use to systematically break down public solving, uh, public, <laughs> public speaking, and to solve it. So uh, I think um, I may be not the world's best public speaker. But I think I win the award for the most improved. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I am a very shy introvert. It is very hard for me to be on this stage right now and talking about public speaking. <laughs> uh, and like all shy introverts, naturally, the hobby that I took up was stand-up comedy. <laughs> So uh, I, I heard of uh, the Royal Comedy Competition, and if you haven't heard of that before, it's Australia's largest stand-up comedy competition. I just turned 16, which is the minimum age to enter that competition, and I told my mum, I'm going to enter into this stand-up comedy competition, and can you please accompany me there because I'm not allowed in the venue alone. <laughs> and uh, it was... I mean, it, it was one of the most exciting things I've ever done. Uh, and I was absolutely terrified. <laughs> I had terrible stage fright. Uh, the, the MC that evening happened to be one of my favorite comedians, so I was a little bit starstruck. I was speaking to the other contestants that evening. They had all been practicing their routines for a year before that point. This was my first ever show. <laughs> And when my name was uh, called out and I got up on stage, I noticed that my left leg had stopped working because I was that afraid. <laughs> and I had to awkwardly hop <laughs> towards the microphone because that was the only thing I could think of in that moment. Uh, and the, but the incredible thing is I, I love comedy so much and I knew that if I wanted to keep being a stand-up comedian, that I would have to get a lot better at this public speaking game. And I've been doing it now for 12 years. I've been doing stand-up, I've been doing improv comedy. If you've never seen that before, that's comedy minus the script in teams. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> and uh, uh, recently I've been doing some more sketch comedy. And I think if, if I can learn to stand up on this stage, uh, to be a confident public speaker, definitely everybody can do it. Uh, thankfully, there's no video evidence of <laughs> that first stand-up gig. <clears throat> so uh, I think the problem, with, the problem with public speaking is that we don't even know what the problem is. So I'll tell you now. Effective public speaking is a simple challenge of capturing a person's attention long enough to transmit information to them. Now, for a moment, because we're all programmers here, I like to think of humans 
as machines. The hardware is really great. I mean, think of what your eyes are doing right now. It's pretty amazing. And we've actually got really good memories as well, which we rely on to do our jobs every day. So the human hardware, fantastic. The problem is the software. <laughs> the human operating system is full of bugs. Full of bugs. So this talk is a really big deal for me uh, to speak at PyCon. It's a massive national conference. This is a career highlight for me. And uh, I'm very, very grateful to be here. I've only got one tiny complaint, though. This is the time slot before lunch. <laughs> this is the toughest time slot of the entire conference. Everybody in this room is hangry right now, including me. <laughs> Humans are hyper-optimized to think about food and that other thing. We are constantly thinking about what we're going to eat next and who we're going to do next. The challenge of public speaking is to be more exciting than both of these thoughts for a very short amount of time. <laughs> so in your job, what do you do when you deal with a package or a framework that's got some bugs in it? You can raise a pull request. You can. Uh, put an issue out there. Sorry, the last commit to the human operating system was 10,000 years ago. You are not going to get your bug fixed. But in our jobs, when we find a technical problem, we look at it, we don't run away, we break it down, and we try and solve, solve it piece by piece, right? So that's exactly what we could do for public speaking. And the really great thing is, you don't have to come up with an original solution every time. It's just like programming. You just recycle the same old design patterns and algorithms <laughs> to solve the problem. And it ends up looking like pretty good public speaking. So the human operating system is buggy, but it is consistently buggy. <laughs> and we can come up with a hacky workaround <laughs> to solve public speaking. So you already know how to succeed as a programmer. Let's just take that same mindset and the exact same approach and apply it to public speaking. This is a programmer's guide to public speaking. My first design pattern is to start in the middle. Every stand-up comedian knows they've only got two seconds to be exciting before the heckling and the abuse starts. <laughs> Every beginner stand-up learns this very quickly. So you might have noticed that at the start of today's talk, the first sentence I said was that every developer can be a great public speaker. I said that to you because I wanted to grab your attention away from the thought of lunch. I'm thinking about lunch right now, and I'm delivering this talk. <laughs> I needed to, to say something to you in the first two seconds that was going to get your attention, just show you a little preview of what was to come, but I didn't actually tell you how you were going to be a better public speaker. Just enough to get you interested. Now, you might be thinking, geez, two seconds, that's a bit harsh, and yes, stand-up comedy is pretty harsh but you're still dealing with the human operating system at the end of the day. So even if you're at a conference, and it's very nice here at PyCon, you don't have people heckling at you. You only have two seconds, so <laughs> that's all you've got. Now, start in the middle is a design pattern that's been used by every piece of entertainment you've ever seen. And now that I've told you about it, you're going to see it everywhere. <laughs> so, for example, an action movie, for example, a Bond movie, usually starts with the most exciting thing at the top. They leave that boring exposition later on, half an hour, one hour later, after you're fully invested in finding out how the story goes. 
So in your conference talk, do the same. Put your most exciting idea in the first two seconds. So that's why in comedy we say, start in the middle. My second design pattern is to know your audience. And uh, what that entails is being able to answer the question, what's in it for me? So right after I told you that every developer can be a great public speaker, about five seconds after that, I told you in the next 10 minutes you're going to be better at public speaking. Because after you've grabbed someone's attention in that first two seconds, you've got to keep giving them something to hold their attention for the entire talk. The PyCon lunch buffet is really excellent. <laughs> so, <laughs> you've got to work hard. I am competing against a passion fruit meringue tart right now. <laughs> so make sure you clearly communicate what's in, what's in, the what's in it for the audience. Now, this is the bedrock of your talk. And I wanted to make sure that I was going to deliver a talk that was worth your time and that you were going to find valuable today. So I spoke to 50 developers, mathematicians, university lecturers, and comedians to talk about my talk with them. And I asked them for feedback. I asked them the things that they wanted to see. And I asked them for their opinions. And their feedback is in this talk. I did a lot of research. <laughs> And I also gave this talk at, uh, at a meetup. And I asked you all if you wanted to be better public speakers, right? I asked you to put your hand up at the very beginning. So it's very important to know who is in your audience. And then you'll be able to answer the question, what's in it for me? Okay, another. This time, it's an algorithm. It's uh, telling stories. Humans love stories. And stories are a great way to get through that operating system bug of being distracted. <laughs> At the beginning of this talk, I told you the story of my first ever stand-up gig. Now, why did I bother telling you that story? It was basically repeating the exact same thing I said in the first sentence of this talk, which was that every developer can be a great public speaker. I told you that story because it's going to be a lot more memorable than that opening line. And it's much more easier to convey my point with that story. So when I'm telling you that story, you're imagining how frightening it was to be 16 and on stage for the very first time. Uh, when I also grabbed the microphone off the stand, I had the horrible thought that I don't know how to use a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it was a disaster. You're imagining how I felt. And you're probably also noticing that when I tell you this disaster story, that my left leg is working just fine. So yes, I did just repeat the point that every developer can be a great public speaker. But instead of telling you that, I showed you that that was possible. So the story algorithm, there are many. The most basic one is to have a beginning, middle, and end. Everything from Little Red Riding Hood to the last thing you watched on Netflix is using this algorithm. <laughs> So in a conference talk, the beginning, middle, and end might be the problem that you encountered, the thinking process that you went through, maybe some things you tried but didn't work out. And then the ending is how you solved the problem, or at least what you learned from your process. You can feel free to change this algorithm a little bit. You don't have to have three stages. You can Maybe after you solve the first problem, you realize there was a second, much larger problem to solve. And that's a plot twist that you can add to your story. When you're telling your story, uh, in my story, I spoke about my emotions and what was running through my head. 
It's also very useful to try and use pictures and diagrams where you can. And another great tip is to use analogies because they connect what you're trying to say to what the audience already knows. And you probably noticed that this talk is one very big analogy. <laughs> I'm trying to explain public speaking as a software engineering problem. So no matter how technical your talk is, there is always going to be a story in there, at least that basic story of discovering a problem, what you did while you were thinking about it, and how you solved it. So please, always tell stories. OK, now I'm going to share with you uh, some quick tips that you can use straight away to look more confident. Now, when people are learning a new skill, we often try to think about what we need to learn. What's the new thing I need to start doing? And for public speaking, it's actually equally as important to think about the habits to stop doing. Looking confident on stage is not really like trying to look confident. It's more of a game of stopping the things that make you look nervous. And I think a lot of people put their game faces on and their face doesn't look very nervous. But look at their hands and their feet and you'll see who's freaking out right now. Uh, so I'm, I am freaking out right now, but uh, here's what I'm doing to not look like it. With these algorithms, please feel free to quietly scream in your mind and feel nervous. I am allowing you to feel nervous, but this is a way to not look as nervous <laughs> as you feel. All right, so hands are very important. I think it's good to, to not put them in pockets. Uh, I, I often see people really trying to dig into their pocket, and uh, if they've got some keys in there, they're, they're playing with, their, with the keys. And unfortunately, you, you don't notice this is happening when you're on stage because you're so focused thinking about the next sentence you're going to say. But doing this on stage makes you look really nervous and evasive, and hiding your hands makes it look like, I don't want to be here. So it, it is much easier to just leave them out of your pockets. Uh, I also see people folding their arms a lot. And, and this by itself is, is fine. Uh, again, the problem is just subconsciously, when you don't want to be on stage, your hands start creeping up. And then soon, you're warming your hands and your armpits. <laughs> really gross when you want to shake someone's hands later. <laughs> and eventually, you are almost in the fetal position, <laughs> standing up. Um, I know you're laughing, but I've seen this happen so many times. And and I do this too, so, so I, I just don't do that. Um, what my improv comedy teacher says is always be power posing. Uh, but if you don't want to be power posing, you can just have your hands to, to your sides. Uh, and another thing is the feet. I think they tell a lot about how someone's feeling right now. There is a tendency, I mean, there's so much to say about stance and all that. But the most common mistake I see is people leaning, leaning back. And when you lean back, it kind of looks like you're physically saying, I don't want to be here right now. Even if you're behind a lectern, it, it still very much looks like you're saying, I don't want to be here. And you know, an enjoyable talk is really when we see speakers want to be on stage and enjoying themselves on stage. So feel free to freak out and be nervous about a big deal talk. If you just stop those behaviors, I think it will really improve your confidence on stage. So I already told you a bunch of design patterns and algorithms to be great at public speaking. So, if you can implement all of that, you're going to be in the top 1% of all developers. But it's really hard, isn't it? How am I actually 
going to do it. Okay, now I know what to do, how am I going to do it? And there's only one algorithm for that. Practice. While true, practice. <laughs> I'm, I'm only, I've only improved by doing a lot of gigs. So if you want to get better, you have to do the reps. Yeah, but it's really easy for me to say, yeah, just do the reps. Yeah, you just need to do this for 10 years and then you're going to be fine, right? Easy for me to say that now, I've already done it. <laughs> how, how is anybody going to do the reps? The, the thing that's standing between us and great public speaking is just doing the reps. The problem is another human operating system bug. It is the self-judgment in our minds. We're afraid of what people will think of us when we're on stage. So this is something to remember. People want you to succeed. Think of the people who are at PyCon today. Think of the people sitting in this room right now learning about public speaking. We're all a bunch of big nerds. <laughs> They've given up our Sunday mornings to talk about our favorite programming language. <laughs> this is a friendly crowd, okay? The people here do not want to heckle you. The people here want you to have a good time. People here want to learn from you. Think about who you are. You're the expert. On your topic, you've been working on something, you've been tinkering on something for a really long time, and you've been doing it for so long that you know more than any of us. And we really want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, but I say people want you to succeed, and then nobody believes me. People are like, yeah, yeah, but still, I'm afraid someone's going to judge me. I'm afraid someone's going to call me out as an imposter. So I'll tell you what stand-ups do anyway, right? So you just know how to deal with hecklers, put it in the back pocket, but you definitely won't have to use it at a conference uh, that's as supportive as this. What stand-ups do when hecklers emerge is remember that you're in control. You're the one standing on stage. You're the one with the microphone. You have the power to tell that heckler to shut up. Or more nicely, can you please hold your question to the end of the Q&A, please? <laughs> you have that power, and you have the power to move on to your next point. Do not try to think of a comeback, because it will only lower your status. People here want you to succeed, and the people in the audience are on the speaker's side. So stay classy and just quickly move on. So my advice is to be terrible. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I deal with, that's how I dealt with writing this talk. I was freaking out <laughs> writing this talk. Give yourself the permission to be terrible because nothing kills creativity like wanting to be good all the time. I think this talk is crap. Sorry, we're almost at the end of the talk, and I think, it's, I think it's garbage. But I'm allowing myself to be garbage today. I, I don't think it's bad, but I think this is the worst conference talk I will ever give. Sorry. I plan on doing another hundred of these, and I think each one will be better than the last. So you're looking at one of the worst right now. My, my uh, sketch teacher said something really great to me. I, I'm relatively newer to sketch comedy. And right now, I think every sketch I write is total garbage. But I rely on people like my sketch teacher and other more experienced people to point out what I'm doing well. The problem is when you're a beginner, you don't even know what you're doing well. And that's, that only hurts the self-judgment even more. So be kind to yourself. You don't actually know what you're doing well yet. Ask other people to give you the feedback. Another uh, thing that beginner comedians often do is they feel very nervous before, before a gig. 
and then they get nervous about being nervous, and then they're in the infinite nervousness loop, and they freak out. <laughs> so uh, here are some algorithms for that. I like to reframe nervousness as excitement. Uh, to me, it feels the same, but one has more positive connotations than the other. So that helps me cut the nervousness loop. I'm not nervous about my conference talk. I'm very excited to give my conference talk. And something else that you might find useful is to verbalize your feelings. At the beginning of this talk, I said I was nervous. I just told you I think this talk is crap. And I think when I verbalize these thoughts, I don't feel so bad about them anymore. So feel free to, to be vulnerable on stage. Give yourself the permission to be terrible. You are all good enough. I've shared with you now the design patterns and algorithms that you can use to construct great talks, and also a few design patterns and algorithms to help beat that little voice in your head. You are good enough to be on this stage. So please, please submit your talk idea for PyCon next year. The conference organizers at PyCon are actually really terrified every year that nobody's going to submit their talk idea. So please, you've been working on something really amazing, and we all want to hear about it. So if you really enjoy PyCon this year, help those organizers out and submit your talk idea. People at PyCon want you to succeed. Now I think, and I hope you agree, that we can be more than the stereotype of the shy, introverted nerd coding in the basement. We can be shy introverts that are great at public speaking too. Every developer can be a great public speaker. Thank you. Uh, Donna's not going to take any questions right now because of the whole lunch is very imminent thing. Uh, but yeah, I'm angry. Mm. <laughs> she said that you can come talk to her at lunchtime, but maybe just wait until both she and you have a plate of food in your hands. <laughs> Thank you very much, Donna, Thank for your you talk. So Please much. give her another round of applause.